so in today's video we are just going to discuss about thomas moore's utopia utopia is a comment on and a reaction to the political economic social and moral scene of the late 15th and early 16th england century england it is a serious criticism of the european way of life and a demand for an enlightened rationality despite the comic names of people and places we find in it and the extravagance and near absurdity of some of the customs of the utopians we experience some difficulty in deciding when more means what he says even though our general impression is that of high seriousness Perhaps he had the vision of the best state of a commonwealth where all people adopt a system of communal ownership which slightly different from Plato's where communism is for the cream of the society and not for anyone else but in terms of the religious makeup of the place Moore's vision is unaccountable in that he has presented utopia the island as deprived of christianity whereas he was a devout catholic besides underlying the social practices in utopia is the vein of christian principles though that utopia has been presenting for the past 500 years to our world a model of social felicity cannot be challenged under any circumstances it is full of excellent doctrines very useful ordinances etc which direct modern governments to found their institution on it has been very influential like the mirror for magistrates the prints manual for christian princes etc of the same period and karl marx's das kapital of modern periods the ideal commonwealth of moor is not just a figment of imagination it is not something unpracticable and purely visionary the truth of this statement is borne out by the fact that more and more governments or peoples these days are sharping upon a socialist pattern of society while plato based his republic on the cardinal virtues four in number cardinal virtues are four in number wisdom fortitude temperance and justice moore based his book of all the seven virtues the four cardinal virtues and the three theological ones namely faith hope and charity well these are not the monopoly of the christians they constitute the base of all faiths king utopus has set the example for religious toleration by permitting all varieties of beliefs and also disbeliefs subject to restraint everybody should believe in divine providence and everybody should believe in future life the decentralization and delegation of authority to elected officers speak volumes for a democratic or socialistic setup and against the sanction of autocratic unlimited powers to the prince also disallows the elected indulging in evil deeds it repudiates the so called new economics that is great landlords enclosing vast areas of land and customs destroying the common field agriculture the centralized grocery shop provides for all meeting the individual needs in a totally socialistic manner in the first book of moore tries to analyze in detail the succeeds to the social evil that surrounded the england of his time he suggests ways and means by which they are to be eradicated he does not spare any organization of the society the ecclesiastical the feudal the scholastical are attacked but he does not criticize these institutions as such instead he does the evil passions that corrupt these systems that lie at the roof of these systems he is demanding a social reformation the second book is a fable of the moral sort and intends to instruct its readers about private and public morality the way society is organized in utopia is a remarkable in that every detail is considered for its smooth well oiled functioning every part of the social machine does its appointed task impeccably with the result that there can never be by any breakdown all variables are taken into account weighed and considered 
Utopia presents with the picture of an ideal world, a very desirable place to live in, a heaven on earth. But the meaning of the word no place or nowhere or not place pulls our leg. Will it always be a dream world? The answer lies with us. We alone can make it a reality. Our apathy will help it remain a dream. Utopia can be read as socialist or communist propaganda. It can be read as a humorous account of Moore's ideas of what a welfare state should be look like by a whimsical scholar or statesman indulging in pipe dreams. It can be accepted as an earnest appeal for social reforms meant for the England of Moore's time or as a good humored satire on a contemporary England and European city-states. It may also read as an attempt by an Englishman to imitate the classical scholar, philosopher, Plato and perhaps to vie with him for an equal recognition. It may be read as a textbook for prospective rulers written by a humanist administrator and needless to say it can be read as an amalgam of all the above. So in today's episode we just discussed about the critical evaluation of Thomas More's Utopia and I hope all of you just enjoyed and understood what all things that I said.